Welcome back to What Art You Noobs with General Disturbance and you are looking at the T92 HMC Tier 10 American SPG the big boy otherwise known as King Kong by the Americans um, and we're on the west spawn of Sacred Valley and the uh, commander of this uh, SPG is Did You Feel It? Yes, Did You Feel It? That's it. <laughs> And he's off, and he's headed north or west, is it? No, I think he's headed into this little area at the corner of uh, J1 to fire from. Right, little known fact about the uh, T92, they only built five of them, and they were all prototypes, uh, pilot vessels, uh, pilot vehicles. They were going to build these uh, SPGs for the uh, assault on uh, the island of... Um, Japan but in the end it didn't become necessary because of course Japan surrendered before mainland Japan was conquered um, be before mainland J Japan was attacked in actual fact in reality the uh, T-92 took a minute to reload the 24 centimeter gun 24 centimeter howitzer, I should say, because it was a howitzer. Right, we've got a target, a Gorilla 15. It's just a kid. Get it, fires, round goes in, and he gets a big 651, 41. A uh, hit point hit and some uh, stun assist as well. And that was from a splash as well, not a direct hit. Okay, so now going through the reload cycle. Uh, it seems there's a, a Unicum there. Versus. And the grill has been taken out. So I think that, uh, that 5A that's sitting on that corner is a definite target because it is a Unicum player. Or near you compare. So it's quite a dangerous target. Okay, did you feel it's aiming? Rouse out. All just behind, but 303 hit points. And that was splash again. Unfortunately, we've lost the Super Conqueror. And we also lost the uh, the enemies lost the 257 and their back chat 15558, which is uh, evens it up a little. Okay, so now going for that IS-7. Good 15 seconds away from me, though. Well, the good news is that they're not progressing any further because they're at this good solid uh, defence further down the uh, road. Okay, you can get the shot into the IS-7. It'll do a lot of damage. Round out. Oh, he damaged both of them. A good 426 hit points on the IS-7. 180 on the 5A. Unfortunately, we've lost another team member. The enemy's lost one as well. There's a solid stun there as well. That's probably making them back off. That 5A is definitely working that corner as much as he can. Trying to get shots around the corner without being shot in return. But he's showing a lot of marks on his turret from all the shots he's received. Did you feel it's about to fire? Rounds out. And another splash directly in front. 467 hit points this time. Okay, he's decided to move. And he's paying attention to the north because there's more enemy round that way. There's a Super Conqueror facing off against an E100 on the corner there. Now he can make a big difference here because that, that Super Conqueror hasn't got much in the way of hit points. And he's indicating his target with his Tiki. The down arrows have appeared above the Super Conqueror. Tells the E100 that that tank is being targeted by Arty. Rounds ready, rounds out. And a direct hit kills the Super Conqueror. 441 hit points. Great strike. And he's moving straight away to avoid being counter-battery. 
not too much of a problem that he's knocked those buildings over. You can't tell exactly where he's going. Okay, we've only got one tank advantage on the team at the moment. But I think he also wants to get a better angle on the Super Conqueror that's defending up near the temple. Because that is the only enemy that's up there. Or is he going to go north? No, he's going to fire north. There's an Object 260 there trying to go up that side road to try and attack our forces from the rear. Rounds out. Oh, and he splashes him to death. 74 hit points, but a good valid kill. The shell actually landed slightly off to the left, but that was enough. It's The thing about the, um, uh, the T-92 was that even a shell landing near the target would be enough to cripple it or even completely wreck it. In reality, not, uh, you know, the real tank, the real SPG. They couldn't go very fast, this SPG. It was, uh, had a maximum speed of only 15 miles per hour, uh, 24 kilometers per hour. So it was, it was quite slow. But uh, even so, uh, it had to have a huge crew to service the gun. And it also had to have associated service trucks to carry the ammunition and the rest of the crew. Okay, that Super Conqueror is making his way around the building. This is difficult there. He got a bit of uh, reticule bloom when he went to the extreme limits of the uh, uh, the firing arc. Unfortunately, that those buildings are protecting the uh, Super Conqueror, but the uh, Super Conqueror was taken out by the T-57. So now he's passed his attention to the north, and they've managed to get through but um, he's been spotted so he might have to be okay he's got a good 444 hit points there he doesn't have to worry about counter battery because all the enemy artillery have been killed what he needs to worry about is being hit by the enemy tanks so to this end he needs to move away that strb was the last defender in the north apart from the amx 50b he's coming down to help and the t57 is coming down from the temple, I think, or is he staying up there to shoot down at the enemy from a long way away? Okay, he's got a good. He he can get he can hit this um, uh, Panzer Seven, and he does get a strike in there. He's definitely got a hit, and he's relocating again straight away just in case that Panzer Seven come this way. He's only got seven rounds left, but that should be enough to do the job. Right, they've spotted the Panzer Kampfwagen 7 again. Okay, and he can shoot just over that mountain. Yep, he's got a he's got a solution. He's letting the reticule tighten. Almost ready to shoot. Rounds out. Direct hit! 434 hit points and a good 20 second stun with two critical hits. Excellent work. Now it's going to make life easier for the AMX 50B and for the uh, the T57 unfortunately was taken out by the Panzer Kampfwagen in second. But it is going to make it easier for the 50B if that uh, 7 has still got a stun on it. Probably losing that stun just about now. Still got uh, 10 seconds before he can reload. He might have to do a shotgun here. That Panzer Cup 7 is coming this way. He's lining it up. And he's gone to Marty mode, but it's not necessary because the 50B has finished off the Panzer Cup 7. Let's have a look at the end of battle results. And it's a very good result. It's a first-class tanker for Did You Feel It in the T-92 HMC. He also picked up a Bruiser medal for scoring at least five critical hits, module damages or crew incapacitations. He picked up a Gauze medal because he did ten times, the dam ten times the hit points, damaged ten times the hit points of his own vehicle. And he got a Confederate because he hit more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. At least six vehicles that were subsequently destroyed by other vehicles in his other members of his team. So great work there, did you feel it? And if we look at the total scores, we can see he came second on damage. Only just came second. Uh, um, 300 uh, hit points between it. 
uh, between the T him and the T-57, he got 4,245 hit points in total. He came third when it came to kills with only two. Um, the top guy got uh, twice that, but uh, when it came to the uh, XP, he got 991 uh, base experience points. He fired 10 rounds in total and got 4 direct hits, 4 penetrations, 9 splash damage. Uh, damage of 4,245 hit points all at more than 300 meters. He damaged 9 of the enemy. He killed 2 of them. He also did stun assist of 1,435 hit points and he caused 11 stuns in total. On a premium count he earned 67,884 credits. After deductions for ammunition, which is fairly expensive for the T-92, he takes away 42,884 credits. So he did make a profit, a nice profit at that. He could have used premium rounds and that would have uh, take, been much more expensive. He received 1,487 XP, but as there was no multipliers, that's all he took away. But uh, nice battle, did you feel it? I, I feel you actually did a massive part of the work in keeping that enemy from uh, overwhelming the base uh, because you helped out in the north when you needed it to, to get rid of that 5A, which was a unicum. And then once uh, that uh, problem had been overcome, you actually switched to the, uh, the north and managed to blunt the attack and allow the rest of the team to catch up and eventually to defeat uh, the remaining uh, enemies. So well done indeed. If you enjoyed this replay, please do give it a like and do subscribe to our channel. And hopefully I'll see you in the next replay.